All right. Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakakadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great examples for his younger brothers. And peace and blessings, salutations, hopefully, God, they're pushing his word in truth and in sincerity across the four winds in the name of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Pushing to get up out of here, shout out to the hopeful like the believers, the listeners, who may have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in Yahweh by Shemal Shah. All right, now I want to get into this morning, you know, is asking, you know, according to the will of Yahweh by Shemal Shah. All right, and it's based off of your um, scripture in First John chapter 5, verse 14. And it says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ha ask anything according to to his will, he will hear with us, okay, so, what we have to understand, you know, now, when we pray, you know, as, I say, we always constantly maturing in the faith, you know, we know the things to pray for, okay, now we have a better understanding of what to pray for as we mature in the faith, you know, as we go from going, being children, all right, spiritual children, spiritual babes, you know, spiritual newborn, okay, to becoming adults in this thing, okay? Then <clears throat> we have a better understanding, you know, of what to pray for, okay? So reading it again, First John chapter 5, verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us, and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that he have the petitions that we desire of him, okay? So, as we align our life, all right, and our intent more and more with the will of Yahweh by Shema Shah, when we ask for things, we ask with more confidence, knowing that the Lord is going to give us those things needed, you know, because let's go here, as we always get, this is Romans 12 and 2. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Okay? So as our minds are being conformed to righteousness, our minds are being lined up and put in sync with Yahweh Bashim al Shai. You know, when we ask for things, we're asking according to His will. So we ask for things like what? Faith. You know, we ask for things like mercy. We ask for things like, you know, the resources to get by. You know, we're not here, you know, like the prosperity doctrines of this of Christianity, you know, praying for a particular type. I hear it is you got a house that's perfectly fine, a car that drives perfectly fine, you know, a uh, uh, daily bread. OK, plenty of clothes and different things. And you're constantly, you know, Christianity teaches you, asking you for material things, you know. Which there's no, no nothing wrong, you know, with asking for something if you need it, you know, if you got you know, a bad running car and you need something better, you know, or either, you you know, you need the resources to get it fixed, you know, but to have a mindset, because uh, Christianity has taught the masses to treat uh, the most high like a genie, and not only that, they do what they want to do, they don't obey anything in the scriptures, but they want, you know, the most high to be their personal genie, no, nah, it don't work like that, man. And we understand the bigger picture now. We just need to make it, all right, to salvation. We're going to get, you know, material things. We're going to have those things eternally in abundance, okay? So we're not, you know, it, like while we was in the world, you know, we were just, you know, so uh, excited about material gain in this society. But now, nah, now we know that we just need to make it. We need confidence. We need to trust more. As I said, we need more faith, Okay. We need to continue to grow in the spirit. All right? So go here. You know? The, 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 uh, even you sisters, I know you, you know you're praying, you know, for, for husbands. Hey, that's within the Lord's will. He's going to do that. He's going to give you a man of the Lord eventually, man. You know? In his, in his due season. Let's get there real quick. You know? Because you're praying for something according to his will. Why? Because now you're understanding the role of a wife, you, you know, the, the women are beginning to understand their role and their purpose. They they starting to see it, okay? And that's, the, you know, the Lord putting you sisters in the spirit, you know, within his will, okay? So those things you pray for 
are going to keep answering, man. And, we, and one thing about it, when you put those prayers up, you know, we you got to start making moves in the practical, you know, knowing that those prayers are going to get answered. That's faith. That's showing faith, you know? So this is on the book of Sirach 33 and 30. Uh, no, this is Sirach 39, verse 33. And it says, all the works of the Lord are good. And he will give every needful thing in due season. He will give every needful thing in due season, man. Okay, we serve a just power. And every needful thing he's going to give unto us in due season. Okay? <laughs> it's it's going to be within this time. So when we pray for it, all right, now we just start uh, uh, working towards that in the practical, man. Okay? If you pray for more faith, brace to go through trials, it's going to test your faith. Brace, you know, brace to go through hardship that's going to increase your faith. You know, you praying for you, a sister praying for a husband. Well, keep doing the things, you know, keep building up your skill set as a wife, you know, in preparations for a husband. OK, and, and that's that's a showcase of faith. That's a showcase. OK, I pray for it. You know, so now I'm going to do my part and the Lord is going to happen in the Lord's timing, man. OK. And that's the mindset that we have, you know, as we send these prayers up, man. Okay? Because if, if we pray for daily bread, but then we just sit there and don't do nothing. Nah, man, you got to pray for daily bread. Then, you know, go get your hustle on and, and let the Lord provide, man. How he going to provide? Okay? Let's um, let's go here. You know, see, one thing about the truth is is, is, is bigger than this, than this money, than Esau's paper money. Okay, it's way bigger than that now. It's about salvation, man. Okay? This is First Timothy 6 and 7. It said, For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we carry nothing out. Yeah. Nothing that we can gain here in the material is going to be brought. Especially if we're in America, everything going to be melt with fervent heat. Okay? Cars, houses, okay, businesses, money, bank accounts, all those things, they're, they're not going to transition into the kingdom. Okay, these are just uh, temporary things. All right, tools because money is a tool. Money is a defense. Okay, these are tools that we that we utilize in this system, man. Okay, but our people, they you know they love it. They they, they chase it. They idolize it. Okay, <laughs> and it's gonna be to their ruin. Verse eight it says, "In having food and raiment, let us be therewith content." You know, so anything that the Lord gives us after our necessities is extra, man. Okay? And it says, But they that will be rich fall into temptations and the snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of evil, which while some covered after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay, and you read these things in the NLT. Let's get in the NLT. First Timothy six and uh and nine. It says, But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. Cause see, money in this society has a strong demon on it, man. Okay? And the more you have, the stronger that demon can be, especially you know, uh, you know, different spirits, you know, different brothers and different sisters are built to have, you know, different portions, you know, and we'll get that. Everybody not built, you know, to have a lot of money, to have a lot of free time, to have, you know, um, uh, certain things at this time, you know, because it can be their ruin. The most I gives us the script say our proper gift. Everybody has their proper gift for the time being to make it to the next phase, man. Okay? And the Lord going to add according to his will and according to his timing. <laughs> you see? And it says, for the love of the money is the root of all evil. So money itself is not evil, but it, it, uh, the love of it. Okay? The worship of it. Okay? It, it, men, you know, men and women... Okay, neglect morals and, you know, they neglect standards based on the love of money, man. Okay, it says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves 
with many sorrows. Okay? And you see a lot of guys that, 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 that call themselves leaders and teachers how you see their agendas change. You know, the word becomes watered down. All right? Because of what? Their love of money. You know? All these gimmicks. And, you know, <laughs> all the madness starts when, when the money come in, man. Okay? So let's go here and we'll end it. The book of Proverbs chapter 30. All right? Verse um, 7. It says, Two things have I required of thee. Deny me not before I die. Remove far me from, it said, remove far from me vanity and lies. All right? It's Proverbs 13 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Now, let's get this word convenient. Okay? It says, feed me food with food convenient for me. You know, and that differs from, from brother to brother, sister to sister. Now, you get that word in the Hebrew. It's um, hakwa, all right, for convenient. And it's, um, it says a statue or ordinance, a limit, a prescribed, okay, do. It says a prescribed portion, okay, a prescribed portion, okay. Each brother, you know, each believer has their prescribed portion. Of everything, that prescribed portion of the spirit, that prescribed portion, you know, of finances, that prescribed portions, you know, of, 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 you know, this world's goods. Everyone has their prescribed portion, you know, to get them by. Because we just need to make it to salvation, okay? The, 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 the abundance we're going to have in the kingdom, okay, for eternity, you're not going to be lacking. We're not, you know, we're not missing nothing here. It's, a, it's another thing like uh, men uh, uh, leave as if they're missing something in the world. Just, you know, they want to get their portion in this world. Like, nah. Okay? We just need enough to get by in this world. Okay? To make it to the eternal abundance, man. All right? So, going back here to First John. First John 5. And 14, it says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask according to his will, he will hear us. Verse 15 in the NLT, and since we know he hears us when we make our request, we also know that he will give us what we ask for, all according to his will. Okay, so Lord will you brothers, all right, and you few sisters edified to the next time I say shalom, quam yashallah. Baba Baba DTA soon shall one.